Hi everyone. So today we're going to be learning about complementary colors. And what a complementary color is, is the two colors in the color wheel exactly opposite to each other. Those are complementary colors. So if we look, a complementary color would be green and red. A complementary color would be purple and yellow. And today we're going to be working with blue and orange. So a complementary color is the one with the strongest color contrast. They're exactly opposite on the color wheel. So we're going to take a look by creating a fox. Because a fox is orange and I thought we'd use orange and blue. So we're going to be doing a blue background and an orange fox. And it's going to show you that when you put two complementary colors side by side, it makes a huge impact. Sometimes you want that in a painting and sometimes you don't, but you have to know these rules. So when you're creating something, you can use the right color combinations. So we're going to draw our fox first. And I just drew a fox to kind of show you what we're working on today. And here is my paper. And I'm going to redraw the fox and show you what to do. So what we're going to do is the first, we're going to start with a shape. I'm actually going to do it this way and it can help you a little bit because you can kind of see what we're working on at the same time. Okay. So I am going to create my fox. So the first shape I'm going to make is actually we're going to go do by the nose. So it's going to be almost like two dips. Kind of like two little hills side by side. And remember, keep your eraser close. And if you make any mistakes or you want to do any adjustments, you definitely can. So to start off, we're not going to kind of do the whisker area. We're going to take this all the way up and over like a big hill. Just like that. And then we're going to put in two ears. So an ear is like a triangle. Remember how we always talk about don't get worried about the detail, just look for the shape. So that's what we're going to do when we're going to put in that shape. So the same place. I'm doing two exact ears, but it doesn't mean that you can't have two different kinds of ears. One that flops down, or one that's bigger than the other, and that's totally okay. Here we go. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to work on the shape of the body. So if anyone took the cat class, it's kind of the same. So we're going to do two lines because foxes kind of have nice lo longer necks. It doesn't mean that they just have a big body. But I'm kind of putting the neck area in and then I'm going to do kind of an oval and I'm actually going to put the oval in just for you to see. Remember everything is a shape and it's okay because we have an eraser to get rid of some of those lines, don't we? Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do an oval in the belly. You know how they have a big patch of white fur? I'm not going to do that. And they have a big, long, bushy tail, kind of like a squirrel. So I'm going to draw the tail. So I'm going to go in. I'm going to put the little triangles in the ears. And I want you to remember if I'm going too fast, you just stop the video and catch up. Because some parts, it's going to take me a bit longer, but I might be going too quickly in the times that you need me to slow down. Okay. So I'm going to go in and work on the nose. So the nose is just like a little... It's the end of that. It almost looks like a book if we look at the shape we made. 
And then I'm going to put in the whiskers. So I'm just gonna kind of take these down. And if I look, I just kind of go in like this. And I just do whoosh, 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 whoosh. And then the spot where we want the cheeks will be white and this part of the head is going to be orange. So I'm doing my lines like this. That doesn't mean you have to, but I'm just kind of like touching them to this part of the ear. So I know they're the same on each side. And then I'm going to do two little eyes. I think foxes are so cute. My granddaughter, her middle name means fox. It's called, she's DeVos. I think it's a, it's a Dutch word for fox. So then I'm gonna go in and we're gonna do two legs. So these are gonna be an oval, an oval, an oval, and an oval. And you know what? I'm going to do two back legs. There's one. And there's one. I think one of his feet might be bigger, but that's okay. And then I'm going to take my eraser. Remember how I've told you sometimes we want to create these shapes, but we don't need it all, right? So I'm going to go in and get rid of those lines that we don't need. So the one by the neck, we don't need that. And then if I look down here, I don't need these lines, right? It's just how I create these shapes. I end up putting them together so I don't need some of the lines. And that is what my eraser is wonderful for. And also, if you ever forget a line, that's totally okay because your paint is gonna cover it up, right? But here's my drawing of a fox. So I'm gonna be back in just a moment. I'm just gonna go get my paint already. So I'm back with my fox picture. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna use my primary colors. So my yellow, my red, and my blue. And I also have white here in case I wanna lighten the color's value. Okay, so we're gonna talk really quick about how we get our orange. Because out of, if we're gonna create it out of primary colors, orange, is in between red and yellow. So we're gonna take red and yellow and we're gonna put that in our tray. Start with about that much and I might need a little bit more, but that's okay, I can do that. You can. That's why I'm teaching to color mix. So you can always just be working on the pile of paint. You can mix more as you go. I'm gonna actually start with Maybe a wider brush. And I'm going to mix these two together. So I did the same amount of red and the same amount of yellow because I want quite an intense orange. But if ever you want to add more yellow, to make it a little bit lighter or more red to make it a bit more red. So you are the one in control of your color. Okay, that's lots of fun. And I always go like this. I kind of wiped down my brush I was mixing with to make sure I don't have a big glob of yellow or red that's gonna go onto my painting. And I actually think, just looking at it, I'd like to add a little bit more yellow. And like I said, it's a personal preference, right? Don't feel like you have to have it exactly the same as mine. That's the fun part. You could even do your complementary colors as two totally different colors. You could be doing red and green or purple and yellow. Okay, so I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna start painting my fox. Oh, I love that orange. I'm gonna start seeing more foxes now that we're gonna be outside because it's nicer outside. Oh, I'm so happy, but my gosh, a lot of puddles. My little guy loves to go and 
jump in them, especially at times I'm like, oh no, please don't. But I guess it's fun. But everyone has to wear rain boots though. Because it's so many puddles. You're, otherwise your winter boots just get all soggy. Okay. Let's paint the orange. I love this fox. He's so cool. He's lots of fun. Okay. So I'm going to take a smaller brush to work on his ears. Remember I said if all of a sudden this bigger brush I was using, if you couldn't get a nice edge, I just paint up to the edge and then I get a smaller brush just like this and I put a bit too much water so I'm gonna dab that. I'm going to paint the orange part of his ear. Okay, I have to say foxes. One of my more favorite animals. They're so awesome. But they do have a few though, so but I think they're so pretty. They're so quick, but they're kind of delicate looking. Okay, so we're gonna go down into the body. And if I'm going too quick, you know what to do. Just pause me. And come back to it when you're caught up. That's the good part of sometimes having a video is you just work at your own pace and you can take breaks. And breaks are never a bad thing. I need to take breaks. I'm in, gonna be in an art, sh a little mini art show this weekend. Well, it's gonna be about a month, but I set up on Sunday. And oh my gosh, I have never painted so much in the last couple weeks. So I have had to kind of slow down sometimes and take breaks. That's what happens sometimes is when you're on a deadline, so you have a specific day, you gotta be done something. You have to work so hard, but I know I'll be so proud of myself when I get there. Okay, there we go. Okay, I'm gonna paint this side. I'm just gonna paint all the orange part. And that doesn't mean you have to do it that way means that's how I'm doing it. You might decide to go in with the white first. And I'm using a piece of paper and not a canvas today. I find that for me, I was using canvases, which I could just keep priming and using again and again, which you can do. But I always am working on collage work and I love some of these intense colors I get. So when I work with a piece of paper, I know I can use this paper again. I can use this paper to create lots more art. And that's the cool part. So if you don't, if you do work on paper like I do, feel free to keep that paper because then you could like make a collage with it. There we go, just like that. He's quite a cute fox, I think. And I realized right now, and not the way that I had you draw your feet in the first one. I think these ones might be a bit different, but I notice it doesn't really work for me because my feet are right behind this orange. So if I painted these orange, you wouldn't be able to see them, would you? So I'm gonna show you what to do. Even if you are not in the same position as me right now, you can always still do this, but if you don't want to, that's okay too, because it's gonna work out for your drawing, I think but I am gonna change the value of my orange. So remember, value is when a color is lighter or darker. So I'm gonna take some white, and I'm gonna take my white, and a little bit of orange, and it's gonna be kind of a drastic color change, just so you can see, a little bit more orange, you can see the difference. So you can see which are the back feet and which are the front feet. That's a really easy way to work the color when, when two colors are the same color, but you wanna be able to see that difference. You could always do an outline with a black marker later, but I like to change the value. That's a really good way to do it too. There we go. 
just like that. See, all these things that we go, oh no, it's a problem, I haven't thought of it. There's always a solution and sometimes you just need to leave it for a bit. Think about how, okay, what do I want? So I want these feet to look different, but I, you want to use orange. Well then my brain will tell me, okay, so how do you change the orange enough that you can see the difference? Color value. So color value helps you kind of get back in control of the image you're making. See, it's one of those rules that you don't always have to listen to, but it's good to know. Okay, so I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna paint the tail. You could do all sorts of different animals. Pick the color and find out what the complementary color is, because you're gonna love it when you see the background. Because the background's gonna be nice and blue. Okay, at this point I'm gonna go back to my bigger brush. Oh, and I got orange all over my arm from this brush. I'm bad for that. I'm kind of a, I will be honest, I am kind of a messy painter. Neat, tidy painters, I think, stressed out when they watch me paint because I always have it on my hands and my arms. I don't really pay attention to that which might not be great but I just make sure I wear some old clothes because I've ruined so many clothes with my paint. That's why it's always good to wear like an apron or a paint smock or something but Usually too lazy. There we go. Just like that. I really like this. Okay, and the one other color I guess I didn't talk about, and I'm hoping I have it here. Yeah, I do. Is we're gonna need a little bit of black. And the reason we're gonna need black is I'm going to paint the eyes and the nose black. Okay. So sorry I didn't warn you about that color. I wasn't really thinking. Okay. There we go. So I'm going to paint the details in, right? This little foxy nose. This little foxy eyes. My little brush. Oh, she's so cute. That looks pretty good. So the next one I'm going to be going into is just my white. Oh, and I actually have some. If you look, I got a little bit of orange in there, but I'm going to try to pull the white around the orange. See like this? So I don't get any orange in it because white is a color that will change really quickly. Okay, just like that. I'm going to go in and I'm going to get the tip of his tail. His body. Just like that. They're so much fun. There we go. Then I'll get his cheeks. Remember how I said if you have a big brush and you can't get into, into the areas you wanted? So I'm just going to get close to the back, or not to the back, but to the to lines. But I'm not going to go too close because I don't want to wreck it. Even though if you do wreck it, what I've always said is it's very fixable, right? Okay, let's take some more white. Like 
Then I'm gonna take a tiny brush, tinier I guess, so I can get into the areas that might have been a little bit challenging with that big brush. It's always why you wanna change your brush size is when you're not getting what you want. You feel like things are gonna start getting messy. That's usually when you can tell, okay, let me drop my brush size and I have more control. With these ears, I would not have been able to use that white, that brush at all. So I'm glad I did that. And your paint might still be wet, and if it is, just stop, wait for it to dry. Okay, and I go, I'm always getting this, okay, I need to move this brush because it's causing me issues. I'm a mess. Perfect. Okay. Okay, I love it. Looks so cute. So I'm gonna wait for this to dry and I'm gonna be right back. Hi, I'm back. And the fox is all dry, well dry enough. <laughs> So I am going to get out my tray and I've already put my blue on there because remember we're learning about complementary colors and orange and blue are the exact opposite. So we're going to paint the background blue and the reasoning why is because you might say why don't we put green grass? I want to show you in this class what a complementary color can look like side by side. And I know you guys love to paint your animals. So I thought this would be a perfect way to do it. But we're not doing the normal background on the back like we usually do a landscape. We are just going in with a complementary color because really it's kind of an experiment to see, wow, how those colors pop when they're put side by side. They look more bright, they look more intense. So if you're doing a piece of art and you're wanting to see bright and intense, complementary colors are a great way to do that. So I'm going in here and I've got kind of a dark blue, which I like, but you can lighten that value too. So if you decide you'd like a lighter blue, you take this blue and you mix it with white and you get that perfect value blue that you want to paint. Okay, and I'm just going through. Perfect. Okay. Just like this. I'm going to keep going here. Uh, using maybe a little bit too big of a brush. I could have moved down into a smaller one, which there is a few areas I'm gonna have to, but there's a few little areas, like a, you'll see that there might be a little bit I missed, but I'm gonna go in with a smaller brush. So this is a great experiment too with brush size, right? Perfect, just like that. Keep working all the way up. Just be careful when you come to this part of the face, you wanna make sure that you don't, the white part on a white background can sometimes be a little bit difficult to see. So I'm just gonna do the areas that my big brush works on. And remember, that if your paint looks streaky, that's okay. That just means you have to go in with another layer of paint after. Because some paints are more translucent than others. Now I'm also gonna show you something. I've said it before. If all of a sudden you're working on an area of your painting and you're reaching and you don't like it, feel free to flip the canvas, put it upside down. You're the boss. 
So sometimes we need to make things easier, not more difficult. And the kind of cool thing too is in your background, you can always start with one value of blue. You could always go in and do different shapes and a different value of blue too. Same with the orange and the fox. A lot of my landscapes, I will start with a background and then I'll start breaking it up into shapes. And the shapes I choose might be a little confusing, but I choose it like if you're looking at a big field, how you can see different yellows on one yellow field by how the light hits it. And that's how I, I paint my shapes. And one day we're gonna do a class like that too. And I can teach you all the tricks I've learned. Because I truly think as artists, we need to help, help each other. Don't feel like you have tricks. You don't want to show anybody because that's what it's all about is like learning and teaching other people, you know, what you've learned and maybe they can teach you something too. We're all learning always. None of us ever know everything. I was actually just talking to a friend about that the other day and how it's like we all need to be open to learning and admitting that sometimes we don't know everything. We're always just trying to figure stuff out. That's why all this experimenting with paint is a great thing because we're learning so much. And we might be learning stuff I don't even know you're learning where your paint goes on a certain way or you get a certain color and you're like, oh my gosh, that's perfect. Feel free to share too. All of a sudden you find something really cool and you think the group should know. You always put it on the Facebook group or you can send it to me and let me know I should share it. Because I can definitely do that. Okay, I'm almost getting to the point. I need to go in with a smaller brush, but I'm just gonna Get the spots I need. And then it's gonna be time for a smaller brush. Maybe I should have started with this part, but that's okay. We can wait till it dries. We can go in there too. I might even have to get a smaller brush. Have to look. See how I do. Because I can always go and cut, clean up my orange and my white too. Like there's one spot on the ear I might want to try to clean up a bit that I went over the line a little bit. But you know what's crazy is sometimes people go over the line on purpose. The nice thing is we can do all sorts of things with our art and it doesn't always have to make sense. It's a process and it's just you know, experimenting and figuring out what we want to do and how we can make that work. And it's the same with stuff in life. We're never going to always be perfect with things. And we always want to be creative on, you know, if we have a problem, what's the solution? When you're creative all the time, sometimes I find like that part in your brain is working really well. And come up with really creative solutions about things. And art is just a really good way to practice that. So I've got a whole list of animals because I know you guys have lots of animals you've been sending in that I would like, you'd like to learn to paint. So I have started my list and I just want you to know that I'm going to try to work all of that in. And if for some reason I forget something, please feel free to remind me. Because animals can be fun to learn to paint. And I want painting to be fun because that's when we enjoy to do it. Ooh, look, this is where I kind of needed my tiny, tiny brush, but I think this might work. I can always go in with my white if I need to fix it, but when I need a small area, I want you to remember I put my paintbrush in and I roll it 
I roll it in the paint, it almost makes the point of the pencil. And see, how did I learn that? I learned that from experimenting with my brush and seeing, okay, if I put paint on this way, what does it look like? Or if I roll it into a point, what does it look like? Perfect, just like that. Ooh, that's so cute. I've got it kind of going this. Oh, I'm so excited to see these boxes are so cute. Like I said, my little grand bear, grand, grand, grand baby, Briar DeVos, so his, her middle name means fox in Dutch. So a fox is a, definitely a special animal in this house. I might finish up this painting and maybe give it to her. But I want you to realize, now that we have the blue beside the orange, isn't it intense, the color? It's because they're exactly opposite. One thing you might want to know is if you put orange and blue, so the exact opposite colors together, what would you get? You get a neutral color, so you get black or gray or like a muddy color. It would like totally take the color out because it's it's exactly opposite to each other. So that's the cool part about the color wheel. It might be a little boring sometimes to think about, but it really helps us become a better artist. So I'm gonna wait for this to dry just a little bit. And I might have some fun with the background. And you don't have to, if you're done and you are happy with your fox, you can turn this off now. I'm just showing the people that want to go a little further with their painting and we're all different. Sometimes we like exactly what it is and sometimes we like to add a little bit of challenge. So I'm gonna take my brush and I'm gonna take lots of white and I'm gonna put just a, do a drop of blue in so it's a really different blue. And then I might go in and do, you know me, I like just doing random shapes. That's kind of, the way I like to paint. I just find it just adds some interest. So it's still blue, just a really light blue, really light blue. Get just a little bit more blue. And I'm just adding kind of stuff in the background. And you can add some shapes to your fox too in a lighter orange. That's the way it's like you're decorating it kind of. And you know what, that's okay to decorate. Kind of fun to see what you can do. And if you don't like what you put on, you just go back in and you change it up, don't you? Hey, I'm gonna just do this. All the way around my fox. And we're just doing this part for fun, right? You don't have to. See what kind of shapes you can put in. You can put in hearts, you can put in stars. You can even add some markers to it. So you know I like that to do that lots too. Okay. Let's put just a little triangle in here. I'm just going to random shapes. I'm not doing it for any specific reason other than I just want to fill the background up little kind of different shapes and colors, like blue, but different values of blue. I'm gonna add a little bit more. I might even go over some of my shapes with a darker blue. Just makes it a little bit different, right? And you know what's crazy? One shape somebody's gonna put on, no one would even think about that. That's your like favorite thing. Like you're, you're special thing you can add to it because no one else would do the same thing as you. Even if they were doing shapes, no one's is gonna look the same. That's kind of neat how our brains all come up with something quite different, right? I'm gonna do big wonky rectangle. 
And I know some people out there is like, that is not a rectangle. It's probably, you are definitely accurate, but you're right. But to me, I'm seeing it as a wonky rectangle. And I might go in with some darker ones. Let's do a triangle. See how it's just adding a little bit of interest? It's breaking it up from that flat bit of painting you did. Just like that. I love shapes. They look, when light hits things, it creates different values of a color. So I'd like to really play with that. So next time you look at something, look at where that color looks dark. Look at where that color looks light. There we go, little triangle. I think I might just add a couple more up here. Look, I'm not even sure what that shape is, but I kind of like it. I'll just follow kind of the fox shape these ones. There you go. I love it. See, that makes me much happier. I like to kind of decorate that area. So when you are all done, please send me in a picture. I'm really excited to see what you do.